I see that bald spot on the top of my head right now that they're showing. God's going to get them for that. Feel like I'm becoming a chia plant. Right there. Hey, I've known this group for 25 years as well. I want you to give a big welcome. Hold on before you give them a big, big, big welcome. I want to welcome you to this celebration with, woo, 11 time Dove Awarding winning trio, Salem. Ah, this group has sold over 4 million albums in their 25 year history. And as Billy Graham would say, you've heard the music of Salem every day on Faith Radio over and over. And we're excited to have them here. We don't have any literature for them, but I don't think they need it. Help me welcome tonight to Tallahassee, Todd Smith and Alan Hall and Amy Perry Taylor. Here they come. Come on. Woo, look at them, they're looking good. Come on, bring it up. How are you doing? All right, Luke, you can start that track. All right, y'all. All right, this is an old spiritual. If you could sing with us on this, do this. Joshua put the battle of Jericho, Jericho. Jericho, Joshua for the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Oh, sing that. Oh, 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 oh. I know you've heard about Joshua. He was the son of Nun. He never stopped his work, no, never, never, not until the work was done. You may talk about your man of Gideon, you may brag about your man of Saul, but there's none like good old Joshua in the Battle of Jericho. Here we go. Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Oh, 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 oh. oh. They marched with spear in hand. Go blue, them ram horns, Joshua cried, because the battle is in my head. Yeah, Paul and Brady stood. God's victory, the plan. Go blow them ram horns, Joshua cried, salvation in his head. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Joshua fit the battle. Oh, 
You know what, Luke? I want to teach them something real quick, and then we'll start that track. How are you doing? Well, we are Selah. Some people say Selah, and we've been called Sheila and Shellac. And among many things, it means to lift the voices in praise or to pause and reflect. And we're so excited to be here with Faith Radio. Scott, thank you for having us. For 25 years, it's our 25th anniversary. So it's kind of like we started at the same time. And uh, we know what a huge supporter you are of our music and our ministry. And we thank you so much. We're so glad to be here with Dennis and to sing these songs. Um, I, uh, let me introduce everybody really quick. Over on piano and vocals from Knoxville, Tennessee is Alan Hall. Hey, y'all. Good evening. And to my right here, she can sing notes that are illegal. She's from California originally, but she's a Texas girl now. This is Amy Perry. And my name is Todd Smith, and I'm from Detroit, Michigan. I usually get booed in Ohio, so. But uh, my, my parents were missionaries in Congo, Africa, and I lived out there for eight years. And they have a Bible college out there, but they also have a radio station. And uh, so I, I, just the, the importance of Christian radio and how that can speak into people and how it can bring people together. And during COVID, that really became the people's church uh, because they weren't allowed to gather. And so they would listen to the radio and they would listen to the Bible school professors who would preach and who would speak. And uh, just this last year, we did a project where we did songs from six different countries. Uh, we've always done songs from Congo, but we thought, what if we did songs written by worship leaders from around the world to show how God is working around the world because he is working around the world. And there are believers who are writing Believers who are writing incredible music, and so we recorded songs from Brazil and from Indonesia, from Holland, from France, from Sweden, and this next one from India that I want to teach you. So if you guys will do this, I'm going to sing this. I'm going to sing, listen all you people, and you people over here, you're going to sing, Jesus is the only way. All right? Let's try that. Listen all you people. Jesus is the only name. It's name. I said name. way. It is name. It's name. How dare I? Let's try that one more time. Jesus is it's the only, only name. name. Listen, all you people. Jesus it's is the only name. name. And then you guys over here, I'm going to do a name that has no equal. And you're going to sing. Oh, Jesus is the name. A name that has no equal. Oh, Jesus is the name. Perfect. That's what we're going to do. All right, let's try this one. Now you can start that track up. Listen, all you people. Jesus is the only name. A name that has no equal. Oh, Jesus is the name. There's power in his mighty name to save and change. Today, listen, all you people. Jesus is the only name. The blind can see the world before them. Jesus is the only name. The lame can walk and carry the story. Oh, Jesus is the name. The mew will sing and shout his praise. Jesus is the only name. The dead rise up, he's conquered the grave. Oh, Jesus is the name. Why? Listen, all you people, Jesus is the only name, a name that has no equal. Oh, Jesus is the name, his power in his mighty name, to save and change the world today. Listen, all you people, Jesus is the only name. Jesus 
Jesus and all you people. Jesus is the only name, a name that has no equal. And all you people, Jesus is the only name. Jesus is the only name. Jesus is the only name. Oh, Jesus is the name. Oh, Jesus is the name. Oh, 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 oh. He is strength in our weakness. against us. Oh, Jesus is the name. So let us pray for our enemies. Jesus is the only name. His love and forgiveness sets us free. Oh, Jesus is the name. One name, the mighty name, name above all. Listen, all you people. Jesus is the only name. A name that has no equal. Listen, all you people, Jesus is the only name. Oh, Jesus is the name. Oh, Jesus is the name. Jesus is the only name. Jesus is the only name. Oh, oh, Jesus is the name. Jesus is the only name. years back, we were asked to do a uh, medley of songs to honor a songwriter named Twyla Paris. And for those of you who may not remember her, she was a songwriter and artist in the 80s and the 90s, and she just wrote some incredible music for the church. So we're going to sing this medley, and if you know any of these songs, please sing along with us. We will glorify the King of kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will worship Him in righteousness, we will worship Him alone. You are Lord of creation and Lord of my life, Lord of the land and the sea. You were Lord of the heavens before there was time. Lord of all, Lord, you will be. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. You, Lord. King of all kings, you will be. Exalted, the King is exalted on high, and I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign. Hey.
to be led by your staff and rod, and to be called a lamb of God. Oh, lamb of God, sweet lamb of God, I love the whole. Jesus Christ, my Jesus Christ, I'm the Lamb, the Lamb of A big hand for Salem, Todd Smith, Amy Perry, Madeline Hall. I got this out of my dresser drawer about five o'clock tonight. You know what that is? We call that a hanky. Twenty-five years. Let's give the Lord a hand. Please stand. Please stand. Keep on praising for what he's done. It's because of you there's faith ready of the Lord Jesus because of you. Somebody shout at him that let him know here in church in Tallahassee tonight. Hey! Woo! As I'm Red Crouch used to say, this ain't a concert we have in church. All right, you can be seated. About 12.30 today, we were here setting up a little Abigail Beagle. Anybody ever heard Abigail Beagle from Keaton Beach? I said, Abigail, we were, we were going to have prayer. I said, Abigail, why are we doing all this? You know what she said? God, that's why. That's why we do everything we do, Faith Radio. This meeting tonight, and we don't want you to go home without Jesus. We got a little Bethany Joy down here getting excited. <laughs> got the Holy Ghost. She's not even saved yet. <laughs> She'll be a year old next Friday. I'm going to ask John Capellan to come forward. John is the Faith Connection Prayer Line Pastor. Let's give him a big hand from California. And I want you to meet him, talk with him afterwards. Some of you have met him already. But before we do, especially when you get my age, you got to know where the restrooms are, right? There's, there's restrooms back here in the back and also when you came in the front door and uh, be there. But uh, John, just greet the folks and pray for this evening. It's good to see all of you here. And I know that Scott and Brenda particularly have worked so hard to make this event happen and invite me to be here to they had vision 25 years ago that uh, stunned the whole family. I'm not sure we believed you when you said you're going to have a radio station, but we sure believe you now. God has done some great things, and it's been my privilege to be the prayer pastor for the last couple of years. You know, COVID hit, and I thought, there's people who still need a church. There's people who still need a pastor. There's people who need to be prayed for. And you know, uh, every from 9 o'clock to midnight your time, people call me up. People on shift work, people, older people that can't sleep at night, 
and younger people who are up doing whatever they do. <laughs> and they call me, and uh, I get the privilege to pray with them. And I want to thank you all for supporting my ministry, supporting Faith Radio, and I want you to pray with me right now, okay? Our Father God, we come to you now and we thank you for the blessings that we have. This is a night of celebration. This is a night to rejoice. And Lord, we can let down our hair. We can enjoy each other. We can enjoy you. And Lord, we bask in the goodness that you provide to us. We know there are people, even here in Florida, that are hurting because of the hurricane. We know there are people who have family trauma and difficulties. But Lord God, there's nothing greater than praising you. There's nothing that lifts our spirit more than just lifting your name on high. And we give you praise and we give you glory. Not only for what you've done in the last 25 years, but for what you're going to do in the next 25. We ask that you give a great vision. We pray, Father God, that you would raise up the support, raise up the warriors that are needed to do your work in this place. And for that, we would give you praise as we sing tonight, as we enjoy tonight, and we enjoy each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, John. Well, when I met Sailor in person about 4 o'clock this afternoon, I said to Todd Smith, I said, Todd, we play your music so much, we're thinking of changing the name from Faith Radio to Sailor Radio. Let's welcome back again Sailor. It is great to be here with all of you. sing, let us shout joyfully, let us enter his presence rejoicing, he alone overcomes, oh just look what he's done, let us offer our hearts with thanksgiving, let the saints sing, let the saints sing, let the saints sing, glory, glory to our God, he alone, he alone is the Holy shall he reign let all the earth proclaim he is worthy worthy to be praised there is nothing nothing above his name he's sovereign in all things the king above all kings let the saints sing Oh, come, let us bow, let our worship ring out, giving praise to our glorious maker. Oh, come, let us rise as we shout to the skies, to the one who forever is faithful. Let the saints sing. Let the saints sing. Let the saints sing. Glory, glory to our God. He alone, he alone is the Holy One. Forever shall he reign. Let all the earth proclaim. He is worthy, worthy to be praised. There is nothing, nothing above his name. He's sovereign in all things. The King above all kings. Let the saints sing. Let the saints sing. Great in his mercy, great in his love, great in extravagant kindness to us. Great is his power, great is his fame, great is his kingdom, and great is his grace. Great in his mercy, great in his love, great in extravagant kindness to us. Great is his power, great is his fame, great is his kingdom, and great is his grace. Let the saints sing glory, glory to our God. He alone, he alone is the Holy One. Forever shall he reign. Let all the earth proclaim. He is worthy, worthy to be praised. There is nothing, nothing above his name. 
He's sovereign in all things. The King above all kings. Let the saints sing. Let the saints sing. Let the saints sing. Salem for 6, 17, I can't do math, a lot of years, and there are some nights where these hymns that we've sung every night, they just hit different, you know, precious Lord, take my hand, because I am weary, I am tired, and I am worn, I feel like that has been my motto for 2022. We started off our year, my husband and I, with COVID, and then we got a foster kid nine days later, and we were weak and sick. People, we could not make cook for ourselves. We were so sick. Thank God our 10-year-old knew how to make PB&Js. I think that's all he ate for like a straight 72 hours, but we've been waiting and waiting and waiting on our foster child, and then they called, and we were like... <laughs> And nothing could have prepared us. understand why we're not going to get to keep him. And sometimes because I hate myself for not wanting to keep him. Some days. Anyone relate to all those feelings of... And I remember telling a friend recently, I just, I just don't understand what God's doing. And as beautifully as she could, she said, it's not for you to understand here. She's an older spiritual mentor, grandmother type. I'm like, but I need, I need to know. She said, no, no, not for you to understand. And it's, it's just been a time of questioning, not questioning like who God is, but just the process and why and how and why not and um, all the stressors. And I'm weary and I'm worn, but God is still good. And he's still God, and he is still on the throne. And for the next 40 minutes as we sing, my prayer is that anyone who came here tonight weary and broken and worn, that the comforter would just wrap you in his loving arms and let you just feel renewed and feel loved. Because at the end of the day, no matter what I'm feeling, my feelings aren't accurate because he sees me and he sees you and he sees your hurt and he sees your brokenness and he loves you and he sends his comforter, his Holy Spirit to wrap his loving arms around you and hold you. Because sometimes I, I tell you, I just got to lay in the floor and cry and let him hold me. And that's okay. So tonight, whatever you've carried in here, 
I just pray that over the next few minutes and few songs that you would just lift your hands and release it to Jesus. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand, because I am tired, I am weak. Thou art strong. Just a closer walk with thee. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. Just a closer walk with thee. And I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk. Let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, tis my plea. Just a closer walk with thee. Oh, 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 daily walking close to thee. Yeah, let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is over. Just a closer walk with thee. And time for me will be no Just more. Just a closer walk with thee. A closer walk with Just thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, tis my plea. Oh, yeah. oh, daily walking close to thee. Yeah, let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. Let it be. Dear Lord. Let it be. So, twenty five years ago, uh, Alan asked if I would lead worship at his church, and we, we went to college together at Belmont University, which is a great music school in Nashville. And uh, the thing is, though, they have a great music business program, too, which doesn't have anything to do with theory. It's the business side of it, and that's what I studied. I, I can't read music to save my life. 
Um, but he was like, hey, would you lead worship? And I was like, well, I can't read, but I can do that L thing that they do. So I did that. And then the pastor asked uh, if we'd put on a concert, and I didn't want to sing by myself because it was like three weeks later. And so I wrote my sister, Nicole, into it, who used to be in the group. She was with us for the first eight years. And uh, we sang at that church, and then we got asked to sing at another one. And then we sang uh, all things. We sang at a youth group. And I remember driving up to Indiana and thinking, why did we agree to sing hymns? for a bunch of teenagers, like this is going to be awful, and ended up being this great night. Uh, in fact, they asked us to sing His Eyes on the Sparrow twice, and uh, Alan, <laughs> Alan, at the end of the concert, there was this 16-year-old boy who came up to him later, and he was like, man, that It Is Well song, it's pretty good. Did you guys write that? <laughs> of course, I said yes. Um, but uh, no, I didn't. Alan showed, he opened up a hymnal book and he was like, man, it's in here. And there's just so many of these great songs. And so many of these songs were written out of incredible suffering. You know, Thomas Dorsey, who wrote Precious Lord, wrote it after he lost his wife in childbirth. And it is well with my soul. Um, Horatio Spafford lost four daughters in a shipwreck. And the story goes that as he went to England to be with his wife who survived, he was looking out at the waves. And the words came to him, when sorrows like sea billows roll, even so it is well with my soul. And his eyes on the sparrow, uh, the story that I've heard is that there were evangelists who were sharing the gospel, and they came to a church, and the people at the church where they were doing the revival said, hey, would you go and minister to this elderly couple? Uh, they've been on bed rest for a long time. And so they did, thinking they were going to go and encourage them. And they said that when they got there and they walked in the room, the elderly couple had so much joy that they encouraged them. And at one point they said, why are you so happy? Why are you so at peace? And the elderly lady, she said, she pointed out at the window, out the window, and there was a sparrow. And she said, you see that sparrow? If he's watching that sparrow, I know he's watching me. And they went back and they wrote his eyes on the sparrow. And so we've done these two songs together. And for you men, if I can have you sing on this first verse of It Is Well With Me, let's sing that together. And ladies, if you'll join in on the chorus with Amy. When peace like a river attendeth my way When so sea billows roll whatever my lot whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul ladies would you answer it is well, it is well, with my soul, with my soul, everybody, it is well, it is well, with my soul, one more time, it is well, it is well, with
Lift his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches. Ladies, your turn. If you know this song, Wonderful, Merciful Savior. Counselor, Comforter, Keeper, everybody. Counselor, Comforter, Keeper, Spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost our way. Oh, we've hopelessly lost the way. You are the one that we pray. 
sound nice. Oh, feels like just a big old living room we're all singing in together, doesn't it? It's really nice. Tell you what, um, we're going to keep singing a little bit. I want you to, I'm going to take the lead on this little medley here. I want you all to sing with us. We put this together a, a little while back, but, um, and you all are singing so good, we want you to just keep going with us. Believe me, we don't tell that to every, every audience we are with. I promise you. There's sometimes, sometimes we're like, hey, everybody sing, and then the next song we're like, how can we get them to maybe sing very quietly? Or not join in. Or just worship silently. No, y'all sound beautiful. So let's keep singing. This is just a beautiful old hymn. Um, it's always meant a lot to me. It very eloquently, way more than I can, speaks about our hope in Christ. I know the last couple of years, especially with COVID and, and everything that's hit, so many of us have just experienced devastating loss in so many ways. Personally, financially, losing people we've loved, just so many ways it's just wreaked havoc on the world and um, but we have a hope in Christ and those that we've lost for those of us that put our hope in Jesus the ones that we've lost here it's not goodbye forever we'll see them again and I love this hymn because it talks about that and we have um, I would love for you to pray for him we have a dear dear friend named Nathan Setvite he's our producer's brother our co-producer and our engineer, Jason, who's been with us to day one, 25 years ago, he's with him now. Um, Nathan is uh, not doing well. He's 43 years old. He has twin boys that are eight years old, uh, a loving wife. Nathan is facing um, some serious, serious complications and may not make it. And he's in the hospital now and the family, people around the world have been praying. And this song... Even if God doesn't heal Nathan the way I'm hoping he would here, I know that he'll be healed because he believes in the Lord. I selfishly, I want him to be here as a friend and as a father, and, but I know God knows best. But this hymn just beautifully speaks of the hope we have in Christ and the ones we've lost that have gone before, and we'll see them. And I'd love for y'all to sing, sing it with us. And I, if I get too emotional, you may have to take over, okay? But like I said, you already sing beautiful, so I'm not worried about it. There's a land that is fairer than day And by faith we can see it afar For the Father who waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there Ready, sing. In the sweet by and we shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore And we will sing on that beautiful shore The melodious songs of the blessed and our spirits will sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the blessing of rest. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet. Sweet by and by, yes, we shall 
meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore sing this because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone all fear is gone because I know because I know Because he lives. Sing that again. Because he lives. Because I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know. Life is worth a living. Luke, you can go ahead and play that next song. Can I get y'all to stand up for this one? This is a, a newer one. The chorus is real easy to pick up on. It's just called, I Belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Well, bless him, mystery. The vilest of all sin is now forgiven and redeemed. Oh, the depths of darkness His love would reach down through To cover me with mercy And hide me in His wounds Here's the chorus Oh, hallelujah Oh, bless His name Ten thousand years will just begin my song of praise Oh, hallelujah Sing it again. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Him. I belong to Jesus, the cross that once was mine. I belong to Jesus, the cross that once was mine. Became the curse that He would bear and give to me new life. I'm His forever. I am His forever, forever He is mine. My freedom bought and paid for by His blood divine. Oh, hallelujah, oh, bless His name. Ten thousand years will just begin my song of praise. Declaring 
Is it okay if we do one more before Dennis comes up? Is that all right? Okay. This, this is a combination of two songs. They're great songs. This is a celebration of 25 years of ministry and radio of a family moving from Arkansas and coming down here and pouring into this community and you pouring into them and sharing the gospel and showing who Jesus is and being community. So uh, let's, uh, let's sing these songs. Hey, and I know you all were just up, but if you feel like during this one, feel free to hop on up. This one gets a little rowdy. We'd love for you to help us out, okay? So if you, if you want to and are able to, you all stand on up and here we go. We'll, we'll go home with this one. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Sweet chariot. You know, I've never seen the back of my bald head there. There I am. Hi, buddy. I should put glasses on right here. That'd be great. Swing low, sweet chariot. Sweet chariot. Yeah. It was coming for to carry me. Oh. I looked over Jordan and what did I see coming for to carry me home a band of angels coming after me Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Let's give another hand for Sailor tonight. Amen. And they'll be back. Oh, at the end, they got a special song for us at the end. All right, you can be seated. And we've got, to, oh, there's been a little bit of change in plans as of about 10 minutes till 7, what we're going to do right now. 
But I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward. You know, Faith Radio, we never take an offering, do we? What do you mean by that? All right. We need all the ushers to come forward and bring a basket. I mean, not one of those little church plates. I mean a big bucket, all right? A big bucket. Make your check out to Faith Radio. And if you want to, you know, the offering tonight is for the expenses of tonight. But if you want to give a monthly, you know, for the month of October, your gift is doubled. Anybody know why? Anybody know why? One of our listeners uh, a week ago called me and he said, Scott, for the month of October, I'm going to match every gift up to $25,000. So make sure you let us know if it's for the offering tonight or, uh, you know, make out the check or whatever. Okay, put an envelope somehow. All right. Man, go ahead and start taking the offering. All right. Oh, before you do, before you do, Charlie Hill, come up here. Charlie's one of our board of directors for Faith Radio. And Charlie, you stand right here. I know at your age it's hard to come up. But uh, you pray for the offering, all right? Boy, if you don't worship tonight, you never will. Boy, has that been outstanding. Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight for 25 wonderful, wonderful years of allowing your word to go through the airways and people being blessed. And God, I ask of you tonight to speak to hearts in a way that's pleasing to you, that they will open their hearts and open their minds. And God, whatever gift they can give, allow him to give to you willingly and graciously. We love you, Father. And God, we thank you for uh, Scott and Brenda having this vision and the way that they have been so accountable and, and following every step of the way in your path. In Jesus' name we pray tonight, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, man. And uh, if you don't have a gift, just ask your neighbor to give you a check, one of their checks, all right? And uh, just, just take care of that. I'm going to ask uh, my family to come up everybody, all right, all of my family to come up. I'm glad to have my sister, Sue Capellan from California here. But before, as they come up, come up all, all the way in the stage, I want to introduce our staff tonight. You've seen the video, and I'm going to have the staff stand. Enrique Yanis, Pam Knight, where's Pam? Pam Knight, Ken Burns, where's Ken? Over there, all right. And you paid big money money for the tickets tonight, too. Oh, you're taking offering. Okay, that's good. Ken and Enrique with Radio Fay and Pam Knight, and glad to have two of our former staff members here. Where's Suzanne Farrar? She lives in Sarasota now, and you had no damage to your home? No damage. Thank the Lord for that. Thank the Lord. And Tom Cottle that worked with us for many years. Tom, you stand. And next to him is Anna Moore that worked with us for many years as well. Thank you so much. All right. Oh, let, can, do we have time to tell you a couple of stories? Yes, we do. Because this is special. Last night, about 10, 15, we were trying to go to sleep. And uh, we got a phone call. Brenda was snoring. By the way, I know what you're thinking. Right, John? How a pretty woman like this could be married to me for 43 years? Or how she could even marry me? You know what she's told people around the world? Somebody had to. Oh. <laughs> We've heard that one in Africa too, Evan Harold. All right. What was I saying? Oh, 10, 15, the phone rang. It was Brittany, our daughter from Colorado Springs. She works with Focus on the Family. Oh, Mom, I'm sorry to wake you. But I was supposed to have a package delivered today, and I got record that it was delivered. Can you go to the front porch and, and see if it came? So Brenda got up, went to the front porch, turned the light on, and there was our daughter, Brittany, <laughs> flew in from Colorado Springs. Thank you. And then our son, Jonathan, who lives in Denver, Colorado, he was in a conference this week in Lynchburg, Virginia, and all of a sudden, about 10 minutes to 7, I turned, and there was Jonathan, flew in. 
to be with his mom and dad and all you folks with Faith Radio. And I believe on, on Facebook Live, Kaylee and Liliana and Brody and Krista are watching there in Denver right now. You want to say hi to them? Hey, guys. How, how long are you going to be able to stay? Uh, Monday. Monday. Where are you going to sleep? I think an air mattress at your house. That wouldn't be very good. Come all the way from Denver, sleep on an air mattress. But that sometimes you got to do what you got to do, you know. <laughs> all right. And then our son David and his wife Ashley. And tell them your name and what city you live in. Abigail, Florida. Or <laughs> Keaton Beach. <laughs> Hannah Keaton Beach. All right, let's give them a big hand. You hear them on the radio. Our son David and Ashley, and this is Bethany Joy. She'll be a year old next Friday. And she, if you're going to the banquet for the Women's Pregnancy Center next week, they're doing a video of the story of Bethany. Amen. Amen. All right, hold on. Hold on just a minute. Okay, all right. About uh, what's it been that the mother of Bethany, uh, let's see, the year and nine months ago, a lady from Taylor, Taylor County, was a meth addict. And in roundabout way, David and Ashley knew this girl. She'd already had three children, and she found out she was pregnant again, and she said, I'm going to have an abortion. And they said, don't do it. We'll take care of you. We'll get you the doctor, and we'll adopt your little baby. That little baby is right here, Bethany Joy, and she's just a perfect little baby. <laughs> if, it wasn't, if it wasn't for the Lord and David and Ashley, that little baby wouldn't be alive today. Let's give the Lord praise on that. Amen. Then you got the baskets there. All right, let's bring Abigail and Hannah. We got some gifts here. They're going to draw the names for Wild Adventures. Let's see. You got the envelopes there. We've got, okay, which one's the Wild Adventures one? Pink or green? Okay. Abigail, you pick a name, and this one's going to win four free tickets for Wild Adventures. All right. Quickly. Shake it. Haraka. Go. Yeah. Abigail, you pick quickly. Quickly. Andre. Give the name. Daniel Mansell. Daniel Tallahassee. Come down here real quick. All right, Dan. You won four tickets to Wild Adventures. Hannah, come over here and pick another one. There you go. That saved you about $200 right there. There you go. All right. Hannah, 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 pick. Hannah picked Hannah Jowers. Hannah Jowers. From Crawfordville, Hannah Jowers. <laughs> Hannah Jowers. Quick, come on. Come on down the price. Look at there. Hannah picked a Hannah. Look at there. That worked out, didn't it? Four free tickets to Wild Adventures Theme Park. How many have ever been to Wild Adventures? That's a good family fun place, isn't it? All right, another one. Sally Jo Rorda. Sally Jo. All right, Sally Jo. Do you like roller coasters? You know, you can give these to somebody as a gift if you'd like to. Oh, you got teens. All right, congratulations. All right, another one. Judy Helms. Judy Helms, you won four free tickets. Come on, Judy. Come on down. You're the next contestant on Wild Adventures. All right, another one. Let's see. This one's another for four tickets. Eva Spear, Spear. from uh, Tallahassee. All right, Judy. Whoop. Eva Spear. Eva Spear. There you go, Eva. All right, the last one's for five tickets. All right, the last one's for five tickets of Wild Adventures. And who's picking that one? Okay. Nancy Parrish. Uh, Carabelle. All right, Nancy. Nancy Parrish. All right. All right. Are you Nancy? 
Can you show me your driver's license? No, oh, I'm just teasing. All right. No, I go. That's all right. That's all right. Okay. All right, Bethany. Is that all the wild adventures? All right, Bethany, you ready? Is she going to make it to the end of the program or is she going home? She's going home. All right, pick it. She's been practicing. This is for Jonathan. Tell him, tell him what this is for. This is for a seven night stay in April at Serene Dream, a vacation rental on St. George Island. Five bedroom, five bath home. All right. And the winner is Deborah Ming. From, doesn't have it on. Oh, from South Georgia, I guess. Where's Deborah Ming? All right. Deborah, aren't you glad you came tonight? They say that's worth three thousand four hundred dollars. If do you need somebody to, to go cook for you too? Brenda Beagle will be glad to do that. All right. All right. All right. We have five extra Bibles. Is that right? Okay. All right. For those in the serene dream, since you didn't win it, we're going to have five Bibles given out. Okay. All right. Who are they? Chuck Swindoll Bible. They're um, Swindoll, MacArthur, and Stanley. The first one, Debbie Caudell. Debbie Caudell. Yay. Debbie Caudell. All right. Do you want to hold on to that and don't get that at the end? All right, Debbie. Burl Lashley. Burl Lashley. I'm going to keep your card. She's going to keep the card here. Well, or, okay. All right. Another one. Okay. Another one? William Dockery. William Dockery? Where's William at? Okay. We'll have the Bible at the table. Lyndon Heston. Linda Heston. Lyndon Heston. That's from Lake City, looks like. 386 number. All right, we'll have the Bible for you at the table. At the end. Oh, we're going to take them out. Okay. Mary Alice Smith. Mary Alice Smith. Where's Mary Alice Smith? It doesn't. Lyndon Heston. Dockery. Dockery. William Dockery. Yep, give him that. Okay. Were you asking for a driver's license? Check his ID. Dad, I think that's it. That's it. Okay. That's it. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ushers, did we get enough in the offering? No, I'm just teasing. You ever been to a church where they maybe not get enough, maybe take it two or three times, Brother Joe? You ever been to one of those? I went to one one time where they, they had money, and then somebody put money in, but they got change and put it, you know, it was like a 20, and they said, well, I'll give them $5 back. Well, anyway, that's all right. That's all right. Well, folks, uh, you're going to be blessed tonight. And many, many months ago when we thought, about having a 25th anniversary celebration. This is a big deal. We thought with everything that ha what's happened with COVID and so many problems and here a hurricane last week and all the things that are going on, people need encouragement. You know what I'm saying? And maybe even laugh a little bit. Well, tonight, he was with us 25 years ago. He was with us at our 5th anniversary, our 10th anniversary, and our 15th anniversary. He's called the Minister of Encouragement. You hear him on the radio all the time, Faith Radio. Let's welcome Dennis the Swan Swanberg. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm going to tell you what, I've had a good time. Can you just say thank you again to Sailor? Didn't they do good? Oh. I don't know about you guys, but, I mean, tonight, I just want to break into Billy Graham and just right here from this point on and preach like Billy. And, uh, oh, I miss Dr. Graham. You know, uh, his birthday is November the 7th, and I think he, he would be 104. Uh, what a guy. And uh, a night like tonight just makes me think about him and, and just some of those great days. Tonight's a great night, 25 years. I mean, that's a long, long time, 25 years. And uh, he lived to be 99, and that's a long time. 
I'm 69, and I'm going, well, I got 30 more to go, and that just, you, I'll tell you what, you know what that means? I'm going to have to keep that CPAP machine on my face, you know. <laughs> Every night, I'm going to put that baby on, just shh, inhale, just shh, or as Bill Clinton would say, inhale. But anyhow, I just, uh, shh, oh, lighten up, but uh, it's so good to be with you, so good to be back with you, I'm telling you. And to see everybody here present, man, it's been a good night. And, uh, and I hope you enjoyed those, those uh, items, those giveaways. I mean, whoever got the, that little, you know, uh, beach place, Lord have mercy. You know, I mean, you better, you better live a good life right now. Let me just tell you. Better rededicate your life right now. Uh, but don't we all need to rededicate our life? I tell you what, I... Today, just driving up, you know, when I crossed over 75, I'd been over in Jacksonville. When I crossed 75, I picked up, uh, I picked up Faith Radio. I did. I, it was on a 105, and then I did a 95 or whatever the number was. And then I come over here and 90.1. How many of y'all got? You know, they're out there. Uh, when I came here years ago, years, years ago in the beginning, it was just on AM, you know. And you just had to sort of grab the dial and go over there, right there, stay. Sometimes I had to just put a pair of pliers on that little, I just hold it right there. Uh, but it's so good to be with you uh, tonight. And I, I, aren't you glad for real people? Don't you love real people? Uh, you know, Scott and Brenda, they're real people. And uh, I've known them a long, long time. And, and what you see is what you get, and you get a lot when you see them. Uh, you know, Brenda, what a, you know, took a step of faith. And look, you got your beautiful kids right there next to you and everything. God was good to you. My little wife, Lori, she's good to me. I love my little honey love, four foot eleven, going to heaven. She's a brunette right now. Uh, about every three weeks, God does a miracle on her hair. Can I get a witness on that? But I can tell Brenda's just natural and everything. I tell you what, during the COVID, we had a tough time, my little wife, during the COVID, because, you know, she couldn't go to get her hair done with the hair lady, and, you know, all of a sudden, there was a little white row of cotton going right down the middle, <laughs> and she's 4'11", I'm looking at her, I mean, I love my, I call her my honey love, I'm looking down at her, and I'm going, ooh, and so I tried to be helpful, I don't know, you know, uh, you know, if Scott's that helpful, but I got a mascara stick, and I just went in there and, and tried to cover up that row of cotton because we're one flesh relationship look young man your day is coming buddy get some mascara sticks when next time you go to cvs or walgreens you go say where's the, where's the mascara sticks you know your wife's watching right now i'm just gonna stay natural forever liar liar but anyhow uh I love my wife. She, I asked her, I said, honey, you're going to ever give it up? Just let it be white. And she went, no, never. I went, good night. That's a bunch of money every two weeks. I mean, I could use that on golf, you know. <laughs> but I love my little honey. But, I mean, then all of a sudden there's like four or five rows, and I ran out of mascara. <laughs> and she came over to me. Normally I just say, honey, love, hey, honey, love, I love you, my honey, love. And she just... You know, came over, and the COVID does something to your brain. It does something to your brain. I think it, and I just said, Skunky, how you doing, Skunky? And just, whoa. And uh, we, didn't, we, we didn't have a whole lot of fellowship that evening, if you know what I'm saying. There were times during the COVID, I don't know, she's real. My people, we're real, we're real, you know. My mama, Pauline Bernadine, she's still alive, 95 years, 93 years old. Pauline Bernadine, she's healthy, got the hangy down part on her arms, she can mash them taters at Christmas. It's just, it's a shimmy. She's just a shimmy. We snuck her out. We snuck her out of independent living. Come up with us for Christmas, you know. And just, she, she said, let me mash the taters. And boy, she can go after it. And she wears a lot of uh, ta uh, talcum powder, Avon. Because farmers, we were farm background. And you wore talcum powder to, to absorb perspiration. And she still wears too much. She's in independent living. It's nice. It's, it's wholesome. It's clean, air conditioned. But she still wears a lot of talcum powder. And I, can't, I don't know how to bring it up. But I didn't ask her to watch this Facebook. But maybe that'd be a way. To... But anyhow, 
She's going at it, and talcum powder is poofing up <laughs> out of her Alfred Dunner outfit. I've seen some Alfred Dunner tonight, some Alfred Dunner outfits. Young lady, honey, tell Focus to give you a raise so you can get you some Alfred Dunner, little blouse, little jacket, and the breeches are elastic. They just woo, 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 woo. They work with you. Uh, so my mama, that little the talcum powder just poofed out and landed on our food. Our, our food looked like powdered donuts. And, and my wife, her people, she's, you know, pretty more well-to-do, and she's going, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Let me tell you something. When I find out something, I pass it on. You can't taste it, John. You can't taste it. The talcum powder, you can't taste it. But it keeps you regular, I'll tell you that. Uh, somebody here needed to hear that. I don't know who it is. Don't you love real people? I love real people. My mom and dad, they're real people. Floyd Leon, Pauline, Bernadine. My daddy died 10 years ago. I miss my daddy, Floyd Leon. He was a, he was a good one, man. I mean, working man. Oh, just my hero. And uh, he and mama, I remember after he died, I waited about six months, and I said, Mama, what was daddy like when y'all dated and everything? And she said, I would have never asked my mother or father something like that. I said, well, Mom, I'm a different generation. I just, I know my dad was a good man, a godly man. My dad was in the 36th Infantry Division. My dad was in charge of the tea on Wednesday night supper, and that's huge, huge. You just don't walk into that spot. You work your way up, young people. <laughs> Daniel, you won something, but you work your way up, buddy. And... Uh, I said, my dad, I love my daddy. I said, he's a good man. My dad ran printing presses for 45 years. Before that, he was raised a sharecropper. And I, I said, Mom, I know he's a good man, but what was he like when y'all dated? And she said, well, woo. Your daddy was aggressive. I said, Deacon Floyd, well, he wasn't always a deacon, I'll tell you that. I said, Mother, did he kiss you on the first date right on the mouth? Took my breath away. I asked him where he learned to kiss like that. And he said, siphoning gas at Fort Hood. <laughs> so, some of these military boys are having a flashback. Uh, I love real people. I, you know, when I would uh, start doing voice impersonations years ago, you know, I'd always like to do the real people. You know, I'd be, at Christmas time, I'd watch Jimmy Stark in the movie Shenandoah, and I'd watch It's a Wonderful, Wonderful Life at Christmas time, and, and it just, I don't know, it just got to me, I, I, and I'd learn to do Jimmy Stewart. Or, of course, during the COVID, uh, I watched Andy Griffiths. Well, I'd watch Gunsmoke, 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 Andy Griffith, Andy Griffith, Andy Griffith. During the COVID, because all my events were canceled, I'm sitting there in the recliner, I ain't buying, bothering anybody. My wife, she's working, she's a worker. She's a worker. I'm sitting there thinking, and uh, I'm watching Gunsmoke and all that, and, and I know that channel is for us older people here because there's Pat Boone standing there going, hey, have you thought about a walk-in bathtub? You know. <laughs> Charlie, you know you're thinking about it. You know, us older people, young people, us older people, we, we look like a tub. But it, we have to be careful getting in there. We slip and break a hip. It's a game changer. I've thought about getting that walk-in bathtub. I get in there and just sit down, close the door, and fill that thing up in a jacuzzi. But I'm afraid if I do that, I'll get in there, have a stroke or a heart attack, and my wife will be standing there, but she ain't opening the door because she don't want water to get on her hardwood floors. <laughs> and uh, she's just going to say, see you in, in heaven. Uh, and I'm... <laughs> but I love my little honey, my little sugar babe. She's real. She's real. Uh, oh, man, we're getting that bed at night during the COVID especially. We'd be getting a lot of tents during the, during the day, but at night we'd laugh. We'd get, we had a split king bed. It's a split king. It's king, but there's a split in the middle. I have my mattress box spring. She has her mattress box spring, and that way I don't wake her up because I got restless legs. One day, young fella, you'll have it. One day. 
Right now, you're going, <laughs> your day's coming, buddy. Yeah, you you acting young. Look, your, your honey's going, he's, he's in shape. He's in shape. Well, one day, he's going to look like this. Just right there. And he's going to carry some pills. I carry my pills. I got all kind of pills. I take a restless leg pill at five. I already took my restless leg pill. And uh, I got a bunch of other pills. Take at tonight, several pills. Take them in the morning. Thyroid, this, that. I take Etodo, like anti-inflammatory. I take a tramadol. I mean, I'm drug. I'm, I don't drink. I just do drugs. <laughs> but anyhow, my wife and I would get in that bed, you know, and all of a sudden I get a little restless leg. I'm taking my pill, but it still starts sometimes restless, and and uh, sometimes. Uh, you know, I can't, I don't know it's, you know, doing that, you know, because I just don't know it because I've got my CPAP machine on. I just, shh, 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 shh. And all of a sudden she says, your, your knee is jerking. I'm going, oh, oh. I don't even know who I am. I'm it's a woman hollering at me. You know, well, you wear a CPAP machine for deep sleep, for deep sleep. I'm in deep sleep. And all of a sudden, I'm just hearing, your knee is jerking. You know, we've been married 43 years. If we'd just been married a few, three or four years, you know what she would have said? Honey, your knee is jerking. Just jerking. But when you've been married 43 years, and look at Brenda right now. She's going, your knee is jerking. Just, I mean, she's a quiet little thing. She's a real sweetheart. And then sometimes my mask leaks. You know, it's a mask. I mean, I do the best I can. I put it on there and just... And it, it's leaking. I don't know it's leaking because I'm in deep sleep. I'm just... And all of a sudden she hollers, You're leaking! I'm going, oh, oh. I was a bedwetter till I was in the sixth grade. And uh, I thought I had an accident. She said, Your mask, your mask. I'm like, but we would laugh see we'd get tickled you know listen the bible says there's a time for tears and there's a time for laughter you know the bible says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine but a broken spirit dries up the bones and if your bones dry up they can get brittle and break then you can't walk or run and then you got to take beneva <laughs> for bone density you women osteoporosis beneva sally fields does a commercial on it beneva let me tell you what I do for my bone density. Bluebell ice cream. Have y'all had that? Oh. 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 I mean, Bluebell and Little Debbie Swiss roll cakes. Oh. Every time I bite into a Little Debbie Swiss roll cake, every fat cell in my body does the hallelujah chorus. Hallelujah. I'm a Baptist, but, you know, usually Baptists just hands go about shoulder level. But when I eat a Little Debbie, I'm, I'm all the way up there. Gosh, those are good. But so anyhow, you know, we I get tickled at her. She's we laugh together. She's wanting me to trying to get me, you know, I'm 69. She wants me to look like I'm 59. So she, you know, I buy the I put these shoes on because that's what she buys for me, these glorified tennis shoes. And then I got this, you know, skinny jeans. You know what they feel like? You know, at the hospital, have you have those compression ho hose on your legs? What, or what, you know, that hosiery? It's like squeezing you so you won't get a blood clot. Right now, my calves, they're, my, my, my britches are squeezing my calves and my thighs. I'm, so I ain't going to have a blood clot while I'm up here. Uh, I got these glasses, you know, trying to, you know, be with it with glasses and and my wife wants me to get my eyes done. She wants me to clip this skin. I have to pull my skin up in the morning. I just have to lift it up. And she wants me to clip, clip, clip that off. Well, I'm afraid to do it because next time I come back, for the 30th maybe, I don't want to go, hey, what's going on? <laughs> hey, sailor. There, hey, there's sailor. Then some old boy in the back going, is that Kenny Rogers? You know, <laughs> that was tacky. That was tacky. Uh, I, I don't know about you. I love real people. 
And, uh, you know, and another voice I, I, I would do, I'd do, of course, Barney Fife, because some of y'all know the classic old story. I told this 25 years ago. I was, I was in the back of the church. The preacher said, what should we do with sin? I stood up in the back, and the voice of Don Knotts, I went, nip it in the bud. <laughs> oh, you got to nip it in the bud. Well, next thing I knew, I got nipped in the bud <laughs> by my daddy, Floyd Leon. Took me outside, gave me the right hand of Christian fellowship. Word became flesh and dwelt among me. And I did Forrest Gump before Forrest Gump had ever been created. When my daddy finished with me, I said, I feel like I've been bit in the buttocks. But anyhow, that's just, I was just giving my testimony, man. But anyhow, uh, but they knew they had a problem child when I was doing Don Knotts, old Barney Fife. And, but we'd go out to Grandma and Grandpa's and we'd watch television. They were the first in our family to have a television out there on the farm and we'd, Watch Billy Graham crusade. And I'd watch Billy Graham over and over. And he would say, I want you to come. We want you to come. Your family will wait for you. And your friends, your bus will wait for you. We've chained all the buses together. You can't leave until you come forward, you know. I love Dr. Graham. I got to do stuff for Dr. Graham. I remember the first time that I ate supper with him, uh, he, they called and said, would you come entertain Dr. Graham and his staff at the Cove? I said, let me pray about it. Yes. And so I got up there, and we were sitting eating supper. And I said, Dr. Graham, I hope you don't mind me imitating you here in front of your family and staff. And he leaned over and said, you could take over. And I'm going, okay, I guess I'll have to give Franklin a job. But uh, I, I was ADD. I didn't know what I was doing. But then. Then the next time we were together, I, we were in these rockers together. And I said, these are nice rockers. I was just trying to make conversation. I said, these are nice rockers. And he said, it was my idea to put rockers all over the cove. People like to rock and spend time together. Ruth and I had rockers at our home in Montreat. And friends would come over and we'd rock together. And I don't know why I said it, but I said, Cracker Barrel has some nice rockers. <laughs> Have you ever felt like an idiot? <laughs> but he was so gracious. He said, there's too many people at Cracker Barrel. I went, right, that's a problem. <laughs> I love Dr. Graham. I miss him. Man, what a guy. But I would, uh, you know, so I, I just, I've loved real people. I've always loved real people. And, I, you know, three people that I just love in the Bible are Ma Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Don't you just love them? You know why I like them? They're you and me. They're normal people. They're normal. We preachers, we're peculiar. We're different. We can't help it. You know, we're just, we're odd. But we're odd for God, you know. Uh, <laughs> we just, we're just a peculiar bunch, but that's the way God made us. And, and you know, a lot of times you spot us because we have that holy bob. How you doing? If you don't have the bob, you need to check your call. Uh, but I love just real people, and Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And we, the story in John 11 and 12, and I brought my Bible, because I know some of y'all are going, did he bring a Bible right here? Uh, but it's just an awesome passage. These people are, are like I said, are, are like uh, you and me. There it is. Hold on. Well, that's Joshua. Uh, New Testament. Uh, I'll get it, babe. I'll get it. So here's the story. It says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, her sister Martha. And uh, it was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sister said to him, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. Wow, you remember the story. Now I'm not going to go into the, the part about him raising him from the dead. Uh, but I am going to tell you uh, just an angle on this, that these were real people, and just like you and me. There's Martha. Don't you love her? She's sort of bossy, in charge. We have some Marthas here. Thank God for them. If we didn't have a Martha, we would be in trouble. Faith Radio would be in trouble without some Marthas. There's Brenda right there. She's been in charge. And uh, I'm nervous right now. She just waved at me. Uh, and... You got to have a Martha. You know, Martha's that type. I don't mind you being in the kitchen, but you're going to work. If you're not working, you're out of the kitchen. I'm sorry. 
But you got to have a Martha. Martha, Martha was sharp. We've given her a hard time, but Martha, I mean, she knew that Jesus was the Messiah. She knew about the resurrection. I mean, she was, she was Ann Graham Lotz, you know, before Ann Graham Lotz. I mean, she was before Beth Moore. She was before all of them. You know, she was quite a lady. She was sharp, smart, and Jesus knew it, and he knew he needed her. Matter of fact, the Bible says Jesus loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus and put Mary Martha first because he knew which side his bread was buttered on. <laughs> you got to have a Martha. My wife's a Martha. Oh, she's a Martha. You know, she's a Martha. You know, I picked it up during the COVID. I'd just be sitting there in the recliner. She'd come over there and stand and say, My father, my father. Oh, boy, here we go. Her daddy was a great man in World War II, died a couple of years ago, 95. And she said, My father, he in the Navy, you know, the Philippines, Australia, Japan. My father. My father fixed everything. My father fixed everything. We never hired someone to come to our home. My father fixed it. My father fixed it. If he didn't know how to fix it, he read the instructions. My father fixed it. And I shouldn't have done this, but I lost it during the COVID. I went, well, my mama cooked. And just, oh, oh, boy. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. And I... But we got to have a Martha. And then you got Mary. Don't you love Mary? Mary's a good greeter at the church. Welcome. Welcome to our church. Welcome. Welcome. We love our pastor. We love our music. Welcome. Welcome. Well, someone new walks in and says, where do we go for Bible study? I don't know. I don't go. <laughs> I'm a greeter. Don't you love her? You know who she is. Don't stare at her if she's here. You know, she's the one that goes to Cracker Barrel and gets a meatloaf and puts it in her dish and brings it to you, you know, for when you're sick or something. You know she didn't cook it, but you appreciate it. But Mary was awesome. And then we got Lazarus. We don't have one word in the Bible from Lazarus. He couldn't get a word in edgewise. We don't have one word, not one. I mean, even when Jesus said, come forth, Lazarus, you didn't hear him say, I'm coming. You know what I mean? There's nothing. We don't have one word. But everybody knew. The sisters knew. The disciples knew. The scribes knew. The Pharisees knew that Jesus loved Lazarus. I mean, we know Jesus from the whole counsel of God. We know that Jesus loves all of us in here. I hope you grasp that. Even if you've screwed up, messed up. Are you with me? I got a little book back there called No More Secrets. Uh, my family, my wife's family, our family, we've all had our bumps in the road. It all, all, it, are you with me? Uh, and, and everybody's got secrets. Secrets make you sick and silence is the enemy of healing. And we've all got our secrets and we've all got our stuff. And So we wrote it to try to encourage people to be liberated. You know, confess your sins one to another so that you may be healed. Uh, you know, I, I think Jesus loved Lazarus for many reasons, but I think maybe the biggest reason, because he kept his mouth shut. <laughs> Man, don't you love a buddy that can keep his mouth shut? You know, it's hard to find a buddy like that. I've got, I, I, I got a book out there called Breakfast Bible and Bull. It's 52 devotionals for men. I did it during the COVID because my wife made me. <laughs> said, go up to your office and get to work. I went, oh. but I got a TV up there too. And, uh, <laughs> but it's 52 devotionals. Every man needs a good breakfast, good Bible study, and shoot the bull with his buddies. We need buddies. Most men here don't have three best friends. And you know it. Ladies, let your man be with men. Let him go hunting and fishing and golfing and <laughs> ball games. Because one day when he dies, you're going to need at least six to carry the dude out. <laughs> what, what are you going to do? Get the steel magnolias to haul him out, you know? I want my buddies to take me out. Listen, he loved Lazarus. 
I, th I think he was close to his 12 disciples. I think he was close to the inner circle, James and John and Simon and Peter. But I'm going to tell you something. He loved old Lazarus. I tell you what, men, do you have that one buddy? Or a better question is this. Are you that buddy to somebody? Huh? I, I had a buddy, a buddy like that that I guess he knew. I, he's a guy I talk to and I tell stuff to. That's nervous, isn't it, when you tell somebody something? I mean, you hope that he, when he gets Alzheimer's, he just doesn't let it all out. <laughs> I mean, at least if he does then, you can say, oh, he's crazy, you know. <laughs> and I guess he just knew I needed to hear it today. I was telling Selah back there in the back that I was going to be ministered today by them. And... I just, the Lord told me that they're going to minister, and they did. They sang hymns and stuff and songs I knew. And when you sang through it all, oh. I remember when I was back there, you know, I got saved in 71 during the Jesus movement, and I thought back then I'd been through it all. Well, I got two boys, and I've been through it all. And you know what? They could sing it too because they've been through it all with me, putting up with me and my wife. You know, for 22 years in the local church and 28 years come uh, February with me on the road. But she's so, I think she's happy I'm on the road. And, you know, after we were together for two years during the COVID, you know, I don't know how to say this, but please don't misunderstand, but I'm happy to be with you tonight. <laughs> and you know, and you know what? She is so happy I am here. <laughs> but I love her. I mean, she's got my back. And I can go to her. And, and we need our spouse. Your, your spouse should always have your back. They ought to be the most loyal person for you and your best interest. But man, even if you got a good sugar baby, honey, love a woman. Hubba hubba. You need a buddy. And, and my buddy sent me. Psalm 61 today, verse 2 through 4. And you know what? It, it was good. I just listened to MacArthur on Faith Radio. Uh, then it, it just, I don't know, it just came at a good time. And while I was driving, okay, don't tell anybody, but I opened up my Bible so I could see what Psalm 61, verse 2 through 4 was. <laughs> Had to take my, glass, my sunglasses off to try to read it, and I got cataracts, and so it was a blur, but... In other words, God is my refuge, is in there. <laughs> he loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And they loved him. You know, uh, when he was with the disciples and, and uh, Lazarus had died, you know, and he lingered four days. And finally, he told his disciples, we're going to go on home. We're going to go back. Even though Lazarus had been dead four years, and they said, Jesus, if we go back, you know, they tried to kill you last time, and they're going to try to stone you and kill you again. Jesus basically said, well, hey, you know, we're, we're going to head on back. And old Doubting Thomas, you know, we usually call him Doubting Thomas. Uh, this time, Thomas, this is what he said. He said, let's go and die with him. I want to ask you something. Is there anybody you'd die for? I got a buddy named Benji Harlan. Benji and I have been best friends since 1972. He's from Louisiana. He's a music dude. I'm a preacher dude. Benji would take a bullet for me. I told him the other day I'd take one in the shoulder for him. <laughs> I mean, I'm just not there yet. I'm just not there yet. I'll tell you who I'd die for. If my family's watching, I'd, I'd die for you, Laurie, my honey love, my sugar baby, my woman. Hubba hubba, love you. You know, the other night, she said, I want to go see Le Elvis. I want to go see the movie Elvis. I said, why do you want to go see the movie Elvis? You got me right here. <laughs> you know, with my restless leg. And she said, I know. I want to go see Elvis. I went, okay. um, I'd die for Laurie. I'd die for my two boys, Chad. He's 40. Dustin, he's 37. Dustin married Brittany. Brittany's an awesome gal. She's a dog trainer, dog groomer. Dustin's learned to fetch. He's learned to sit. Uh, he's, it's amazing. 
And we have two grandkids, got Andrew James Floyd. They put my daddy's name, Floyd Leon, in there. Andrew James Floyd Swanberg. We call him AJ. He's going to be four in November. And when they told us that they were putting Floyd in there, I was going to say something. We'd take him out to eat to buy a steak because, you know, they ain't paying for it. But uh, and they don't just get a chicken fried. They go, I want a ribeye with a bone in it. I'm, my wife puts her hand on my leg. Don't say anything. Don't say anything to a millennial, you know. And then, so then we have him, and we keep him all the time. Well, then they had another one, and they named her Maxine. And when they said, we're going to call her Maxine, I went, Maxine? And Lori again put her hand on my leg. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. We want them to come over for Thanksgiving and Christmas. They'll come over. They want our money. Uh, <laughs> But you know what? We love A.J. and Maxine. Is there a Maxine here? They said they wanted her to have a generational name. I said, well, she was before my grandmother. Uh, <laughs> we love the. I'd die for those in a second. In a second. I love my grandkids more than my two boys. I'm sorry. I'm just, I can't help it. I shared this in a sermon a year ago, and a little lady came up to me and said, you love them both, but you love them differently. I said, no, ma'am, I love them more. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus. And I'm going to tell you something. He loves you. He's crazy about you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've done today. Some of you are believers, and you haven't, you haven't lived a perfect life, have you? You've sinned, haven't you? We all sin. We all fall short. And I hate it. Don't you hate it? And you sense it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's in you. And before, big woo. Just sin more. Eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. But when Christ is in you, you know, he doesn't want that for you because he knows that's a slave to you. That's an addiction to you. And there's all kinds of addictions. And, and we're all addictive in our nature. And sometimes when we sin, we just go, well, I've, I've blown it. It's, it's done. Let me tell you something. Jesus came and lived for you and me, died for us on a cross, shed his blood to cover to cover your sin. And, and when God looks at you, he sees Jesus. In seminary, we call it the imputed righteousness of, of Christ. He doesn't see you in your sin. He sees Christ. He sees Jesus covered you. He cleansed you. He took all your sin upon himself. And on that cross, he died for your sin. And no wonder, you know, God had turned away and couldn't look upon him because he had become sin. Every sin, every sin that had ever been committed would be committed. That's committed today, that's committed tomorrow, in the future. All of those he took upon him on himself. He knows the feelings of it. He knows the anguish of it. He knows the shortcomings of it. He knows the pain of it. He knows all about your stuff. He's, he took it all upon himself. He feels and knows what you know, but he took care of it. You've settled out of court, praise the Lord, if you have. I plead guilty. I take the plea, I, I, I take the plea deal because I, I, won't, I, I can't stand before a holy God. But thanks be to God, March 15th, 1971, on a Monday night. Now, the night before, I was at Conway Twitty and the Twitty Birds at a honky-tonk. <laughs> Hello, darling. Lost as a goose. But on Monday night, I went to that meeting in a Methodist church revival. And at the end, I walked down and I, I knelt down. I was the only one that came forward and I, I gave him my life. You know, I'd always believed. I, I, I think I've always just sort of believed. But I realized I had never received Jesus into my life. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. And you either receive it or you don't receive it. Uh, don't, and you can play the game. I, no, I'm fine. You give it to someone else. My friend, you need it. 
for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, but, but, but the forgiveness of our sins through Christ Jesus, it's a gift. And, and he gives us a gift so that you know, we might be saved. Uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Have you confessed them to, you know, has there been a time when you confessed openly, publicly? Jesus always called people publicly. He said, if you're not willing to, to take a stand for me publicly, uh, how, how do you expect me to publicly stand for you in heaven? Has there, has there been such a time in your life? Can you, can you, I can remember March 15th, 1971, because someone afterwards told me to write it down in my Bible. If I hadn't written it down in my Bible, I'd have to tell you it was in the spring of 71. Has there been a time in your life when you gave him your life, when you received that gift? Has there, I don't care if you got white hair or no hair. You know, uh, just because we got white hair doesn't make us holy. Just because we're, we're called Papa or BB or Big Mama. Mamma, Papa, Mimi, Pops, Poops, Pops. That doesn't make you holy. Have you received Christ into your life? Many of you here have. And you enjoyed the worship and the praise. And I'm thankful for you. And I want you to know that we can continue to confess our sins. When we confess our sins one to another so that we may be healed. So that we may go on. Don't quit. Don't quit. Uh, listen, I've learned a little bit about addiction in and through my family. We understand 12 steps. We understand rehab. And I'm going to tell you something. 80% people relapse. You know, you know, my way over here tonight, I, I saw a Dairy Queen. A Dairy Queen sign is on the other side of the highway. You know, my little thought was, I, I've lost about 40 pounds, but my little thought was, you know, I could go over there and get just a small blizzard. A mini, get a mini. And when I drive through and they say, you want a, sm a mini? I go, oh, well, just a small. It's bigger than a mini. Mm. You see, we all, we, we all fail, don't we? Paul said he was chief of sinners. If you've never given him your life, give him your life. And if you have, don't quit. Don't give up. Don't, don't say, I can't make it. Just confess your sin to him. Give it to him. Like an old song we used to sing, give it all, give it all, give it all to Jesus. Broken dreams, wounded hearts, give it all. Remember? So right now, as we close, because it's time, uh, I really believe that at the end, when Jesus was on his way to the cross to die for your sin and my sin, when he was on his way to die on the cross for Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, you remember he went back to Bethany one more time. You know why he went back to be with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus one more time before he went to the cross? This is what I think. I think he wanted to be with his best friends one more time. Do you have some best friends? You need best friends. And Jesus needs to be your best friend. Now, they all knew there was a time when Mary, Martha, and Lazarus didn't know Jesus as Savior and Lord. Uh, I don't know what the deal was with Martha. I don't know if she'd been married several times and there are several guys just couldn't put up with her. I don't know. Do you know? We don't know. What about Mary? Did she marry some old rich guy and then he died and she got his money? No wonder she could afford the, the flu flu that she poured on Jesus. I mean, we don't know. Well, does it matter? And what about what about what 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 about Lazarus? Was he in AA or celebrate recovery or and then finally gave his life to Jesus and Jesus made the big difference in his life? Well, we don't know, do we? Well, does it matter? It doesn't matter. What, what matters is that finally there was a day when he was Savior, King, Lord, Prince of Peace, a wonderful Counselor, Friend. When my dad died, Floyd Leon, 6'2", 220 in his prime. When he died, we sang his favorite hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
I'm going to tell you what, Jesus is your friend. Friend is a covenant word. He was the friend of Abraham. Abraham was the friend of God. Is he your friend? Are you his friend? Do you know him? That word for know is a word experiential knowledge. Uh, I've written this to you that you may know that you have eternal life. There's two words. There's oida, perception, that I see an exit back there. But with my cataracts, it's a blur. But I think it's red, and it's probably an exit sign. But there's the word gnosko, no. I know I'm holding this book. I feel it. I'm grabbing it. I know it. He said, I have written this that you may know that you have eternal life. Do you know without a shadow of a doubt? My 93-year-old mama, Pauline Bernadine, told me a while back, she said, be sure to tell the grandkids and the great-grandkids uh, if you see them before I do that I am fine because after you got saved, I went forward and I went forward and I knelt down and no one came up and knelt next to me, but I, I nailed it down with Jesus. So uh, no one goes to heaven just because of your, someone's son is a Christian or your grand mama's a Christian or your grandpa's a Christian, you be sure to tell them that, that Mama is going to heaven because I gave my life to Christ. And so I videoed her on my phone telling that story. We'll play it at her funeral. Because she wanted me to know and wants them to know that she knows she's going to be with Daddy in heaven. Do you know? Without a shadow of a doubt, you can know. Because his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are his. And you will know. Just as I know today when there's some cleanup detail I needed to do in my life. Because Holy Spirit is within me. You can't grieve an it. Holy Spirit is not just some power. Holy Spirit is person. You can't grieve an it. You grieve a person, and you can make a person happy and joyful. We can make God glad, and it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Like tonight as we praise Him for 25 years, I pray that we will live a life where we'll plant shade trees. I got that old book. I brought it last time about planting shade trees we may never sit under, but others will sit under. And that they will be blessed for a long time. Just as we tonight are still talking about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. People like you and me. Would you pray with me? Father, I want to pray a prayer right now for everyone here. That we would be listening to you. To your voice, which is louder than any audible voice. That you'd speak to our heart. With believers, you would convict us of our sin. And draw us close to you and cleanse us, forgive us, dust us off, pick us up, empower us, fill us to develop spiritual muscles, moral muscles, mental muscles, emotional muscles. Lord, tonight I pray for those who have never, ever truly honestly given their life to you that tonight would be their night they would be able to save for the rest of their life in this month of October 2022 I gave my life to Jesus Christ and I know and I'll know that I know that Christ is in me and heaven will be my eternal home and I will live the abundant life with Christ in me and through me on this earth as long as I live. If you've never given your life to Christ, I want you to pray this prayer for me right now very simply. Dear Jesus, I give you my life right now. I thank you for showing me life and the abundant life. Thank you for dying for me on a cross. Thanks for dealing with my sin, forgiving me, cleansing me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're making for me an eternal home place to be with you and other believers. I want to thank you right now for coming into my life. Amen. 
Now look at me. Everyone, feel free to look at me. I hope that you're not ashamed of Christ. I tell you, he's not ashamed of you. When he hung on that cross, he hung on that cross naked, bleeding, exposed before all the world, taking on your sin and dying for you. He said, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And he died there for you and me. He knows you. He knows you. And so, if you prayed that prayer, if your heart bent that little bit, if you opened the door, if it's just a little, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open the door, I will come in. If you, if you open the door in the last few moments, I'm going to ask you to, to be bold and do something. I'm, first, I'm going to ask my pastors that are here to stand and just and I want them to look over the audience with me. Everybody else just looking up here. But pastors, and staff, y'all can stand up and sort of peruse things. But if you pray that prayer, this is your first opportunity to be bold and say, Jesus, save me. I just gave him my life. He's in my life. I'm not ashamed of him. Just raise your hand. Just put it up and hold it there for a moment. If you prayed that prayer. Did you pray that? Thank you, sir. Someone else? Raise your hand. If you prayed that prayer. If you're praying it right now in your heart, just raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you back there. I see you. A little hard for me to see you. Over here. Anybody else that I missed you? Just raise your hand. Don't be shy. All that Jesus did for you least you can do just raise your hand if you prayed that prayer now when we leave I'm going to be back there at the product table and 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 uh, Sailor will be back there at their table and uh, we want you to come by and visit with us and, and see us and if, if you prayed to receive Christ or you want to pray and receive Christ you haven't done it yet you, you, you're still thinking about it but if you decide you want to do it you just let me know or you let one of these pastors know let him, Jesus into your life. I want you to stand. We're going to sing. Sailor's going to sing. And if anyone else wants to come forward, just come and pray. Come and receive Christ. Do that now. And if you raised your hand, come and someone, they'll just pray a prayer with you. They won't beat you over the head with the Bible. They'll rejoice with you. So while we sing, you sing along with Sailor, and then you come.
Thank you so much for being here tonight, and I'm going to ask our staff and volunteers to go back to the table real quick, real quick, and it's good that you didn't leave. Go ahead, staff and volunteers, help into the table quickly, please, because uh, we have some extra gifts that if you did not get a gift, you go to the table there and ask them, say please, all right? That's like Abigail on Saturday. She wanted me to take her, her nails done. I said, please, Babu, please. I said, how you spell please? She said, P-L-E-E-Z. <laughs> but, uh, and also, uh, guys, do we still have a Tony Evans uh, CDs and, and material there? If we do, and if you'd like to take some extra home to give us gifts or whatever, we don't want to take anything. And these yard signs and bumper stickers, all that, th all that, all right? Did you have a good time tonight? You know, it's a joy to serve Jesus, isn't it? It really is. Let's pray you're dismissed. And aren't you glad it's Friday night? You don't have to get up you're too early tomorrow. All right, let's pray together. Lord, thank you again for the night that we can celebrate you, first of all, and what you've done in our lives. Thank you for everyone here. Lord, bless. Give safety as we go. Thank you now. For Selah and Dennis Swanberg, and uh, for the opportunity of serving a living Savior. Lord, uh, bless Faith Radio in a special way in our local churches and other ministries, even represented here tonight. Bless now, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you're dismissed. Be careful as you leave, but go to the tables. All right, first come, first serve, I believe. All right. Go to the tables there and just ask them, you know.